Okay, now for question number seven from the M1 Mechanics 1 October 2019 International A Level Edexcel paper. Um, this is question seven. Two forces F and G act on a particle. The force F has magnitude 4 newtons and acts in a direction with a bearing of 120 degrees and the force G has a magnitude of 6 newtons and acts due north. Given that P is equal to 2F plus G, find the magnitude of P. Okay, so P is the resultant force when you have 2F, the force 2F plus G added together. Okay, now the force F, they've told us here, the force F is acting on the bearing of 120 degrees. Okay, so that means you have your north line. Let me just change this. You have your north line. And a bearing of 120 degrees would be more than 90 and uh, less than 180, so somewhere in this direction. You don't have to draw it accurately. Somewhere in this direction. This would be a bearing of 120 degrees, something roughly like that. Now, 2F, if F is 4 newtons, 2F must be 8 newtons. So let's just draw this a bit longer so we've got some space to deal with. So just say that that's 2F. 2F which is 8 newtons long. Okay, and then you have a force at G. When you add it to 2F, you'll get um, your force P. So when you're adding two vectors together visually, you draw one of the vectors, and where that vector ends, you start drawing the other vector. So the other vector is going to be going due north, so straight up. And its magnitude will be 6 newtons. Okay, so that's... Um, was it G? That's a vector G, yes. 2F plus G, which is 6 newtons long. Okay. And the, re the resultant force will be the force P, which is the resultant, to, to draw the resultant, you, you start from where you began and you end where you ended. It's basically, you just join them together. So this is your resultant force P. So you have 2F and you have plus G equals P. Now, what we know is, we know that this angle here is 120 degrees because there's a bearing of 120. Now, we also know that this is a north line. Uh, remember, bearings are always measured from the north line clockwise, okay, always measured in the clockwise direction. So 120 is going to be here. And I know that this is north. I know that this is north. So these two lines are parallel. So this angle here and this angle here must be supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees because they are called interior angles. They make like a U shape. So this must be 60 degrees. Now, looking at this triangle here, I can find the magnitude of P, okay, of that force P, by basically using the cosine rule. Because I have two sides and the angle between them, I've got to find the side opposite that. So we've got to use the cosine rule here. And what we can do here is we can say, okay, the cosine rule, might remember, is actually given in your formula book as well, but A squared equals B squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a, where this is the side you're trying to find and this is the angle opposite it. We have those here. So we can say p squared is equal to b squared plus c squared. So you can say 8 squared plus 6 squared. It doesn't matter which, one, which way we write these two. Minus 2 times 8 times 6 times the cosine of 60. Okay, so if you put that in your calculator, um, which you don't really need to do actually because they're quite easy numbers. Cosine 60 gives you a half. That's going to be 30, 64 plus 6 is 100. 100 minus 96 times a half. 100 minus 48. That's going to give you 52. So P, P is going to be the square root of 52. Okay. So if you uh, work that out, that's going to be 13 times 4. 40 plus 13 times 4. That's 2 root 13. Okay, Newtons. Um, what we could do is we could work out what that is um, in decimals. I don't think you have to, but just, just to make sure. Let's just make sure I'm right here in case I made a mistake. You have the square root of 8 squared plus 6 squared, I'm sure that's 100, minus 2 times 8 times 6 times cosine of 60. Okay, I'm in degree mode. Yes, I am. That's going to give you 2 root 13. Good. And 
you can write that to two decimal to three SF if you want. That's going to be seven point two one. Okay, which is equal to seven point two one. It doesn't specify how to write it. Either of these should be okay. So that don't be as an N. Okay, so these both should be fine. Okay, that's the magnitude of P. So that's part one. That's part one. So that's the magnitude of P. Now we need to find the direction of P, giving your answer as a bearing. So basically what we need to do here is we need to find what this angle is. Let me just move that out of the way for a second. We know 120 is the whole thing. And we need to find what this part is. Okay, this is what we need to find. Okay, this is what we're trying to find. This is the answer part two. So in order to find that, what we can do is we say, okay, the whole angle is 120. If I take away this from the whole angle, I've got what I need. So let's call this angle X here, and let's see how we can use this triangle to find X. Well, we could actually use the sine rule, because we have two angles, and we know what this side is now. This is equal to 2 root 13. So we can use these pairs of opposites to find this angle, and therefore we can then find the bearing. So we can say that the sine of the angle that we're looking for over the side opposite it, which has got a magnitude of 6, equals the sine of 60 divided by the side opposite it, which is 2 root 13. Use the exact values better. So sine x will give you 6 times sine 60 over 2 root 13. Okay, so we take, so let's do 6, 6 times sine 60 divided by our last answer which was 2 root 13 okay that's going to give me that's not going to give me the angle that's going to be the sine of the angle go right on there one second so x is going to be equal to I don't know what happened there anyway it's equal to inverse sine of the answer which gives us 46.102 so 46.102, 46.102 degrees. So therefore the bearing that we're looking for, the bearing will be 120 minus 46.102. So I take my answer as of 120 minus the answer, which gives you 73.897, 73.897, 73.897. 0.897, it continues on like that. So therefore we can say that the answer, remember bearing should always be written to, well they told us here to write it to the nearest degree, which is what you normally do anyway, but you should always write it with three figures, so it's 0, 7, 4 degrees, that's the bearing, that's the answer. Okay, 0, 7, 4, three figure and to the nearest degree. And bearing always measured from the north line in the clockwise direction. So there's the answer. There's the magnitude and there's part two, the bearing. Okay, all found by making this vector diagram, uh, which is pretty simple. There's other ways to do this question as well by resolving horizontally and vertically, but I find this to be far easier to deal with. Okay, so there we have the answer to question number seven.